Hello, thanks for being in a new video. This time I have a rather alternative unboxing because the brand is not very popular, but it's about a low-cost foldable that caught my attention a lot and that's why I decided to share it with you. We are talking about the Blackview Hero 10. Let's get started. From the box, they highlight to us that it has NFC, a feature that I find outstanding but not enough to put it on the box. However, here they decided to place this sticker and they also decided to highlight the internal storage. In this case, they point out that it has RAM although they are physical and virtual. I don't see it as necessary to place this but that's what the manufacturer has decided so join me in taking it out of its box. The first thing we come across is the device and here there are other outstanding features. For starters, it's 6.9 inch AMOLED display with a full HD plus resolution. Again the RAM and storage stand out and in this case it has 4000 mAh battery. Not bad for an inexpensive vertical folding phone. And finally, 32 megapixel front camera and 108 megapixel rear camera plus an additional 8 megapixel. I'll tell you more details in a moment, but for now I think it's an interesting foldable for the price. So let's take it out of this package. And just look, it's a very nice design. Notice, here's the Blackview branding on the hinge. It's striking to me that it doesn't have any gaps considering it's a budget foldable. And in fact, the branding on the screen is not that noticeable. You need to tilt it towards the light if you want to make it out, because to the naked eye it looks very advanced. In fact, it doesn't look like it was such an inexpensive folding one. In this case, I have the purple edition, but it's also available in black. So let's get this device powered up. And while it's powering up, we see what else is here in the box. And first we come across this diagonal box over, where we'll find the tool to remove the tray. Kind of traditional. And here I'm immediately realizing that it does come with a case included. This is an excellent thing. The folding cases always come in two pieces and it also comes with a sticker so that the case is much better secured. Although it is not so necessary to remove this, but it is nice to see this case included which is completely rigid. Also has a soft touch on the outside and goes according to the color of the device which I think is very good instead of sending us a transparent case that will later turn yellow. In addition to the case, we are going to find the usual paper. There is not something so outstanding in this sense. So let's put the case on to see how it looks on. And then we come directly to the charger and the cable. In this case, it supports 45 watts of charge, something very outstanding also for a foldable. And above all, more outstanding if we consider that it is an economic folding. The cable is from USB-C to USB-C, so it gives the experience quite premium in this regard. And that, that's all the box brings. Let me save it so we can now get into the full specs of this device. This is an ultra economical foldable. I had forgotten to tell you its price. At the time of recording this video on AliExpress, it is priced at 7,652 Mexican pesos. Consider that we are talking about a folding and the simple fact of seeing a folding available at this price makes it attract too much attention. It has a thickness of 8.2 millimeters and weighs 198 grams. The internal display is 6.9 inches in diagonal and has 2.5K resolution. Mind you, consider it a 60 Hz display. That's where you see one of the main cuts, but evidently they had to sacrifice something if they wanted to give a foldable screen at this price. Still, it's an AMOLED screen that's going to give us good color saturation, good brightness level, good viewing angles. It's a really very good screen with the exception of the refresh rate which is stuck at 60 Hz, but really the experience is very good. It also incorporates stereo sound with one speaker on the bottom and one on the top, so it doesn't sacrifice on the sound issue even though it's a relatively low powered speaker. And note that through software it comes with a sort of dynamic island as well. The external display is simpler, although the manufacturer does not clearly share the specifications of this screen, but it seems to be an OLED screen of a low resolution. But for a cheap foldable, again I repeat, it is very good. It can show you the time, access notifications, music control and other things. 
Also, the design seems quite original to me, considering that there are several vertical folding phones on the market and this one can be easily distinguished at a glance. The front camera is 32 megapixels with f2.5 aperture. As usual, I took a screenshot so you can see more or less how it looks before taking the picture. A little overexposed, the background and the result improves on that balance of highlights and shadows, although the shadow area is a tad darker than we'd like. But overall, it's a device that has to be considered mid-range, even though it's a foldable. In fact, we could consider it as a low-end foldable or an entry-level foldable and that makes one can get to forgive this kind of details. It's not a very attractive front camera, but remember that you can also take pictures with the main photo system, although in this case it doesn't seem to detect the rotation very well when using the camera. For example, I took the picture this way to be able to press the button more easily, but the picture came out inverted. However, the result with the main camera is definitely much nicer in terms of detail and contrast, although it is a little more saturated than I would like. But again, consider that it is an entry-level foldable and in this sense it complies well. And for the main photographic system, we find 108 megapixel camera with an ISOCELL HM6 sensor from Samsung with f1.9 aperture and also the 8 megapixel ultra wide camera with f2.2 aperture and fixed focus. Here I captured some examples. This is the ultra wide camera. It looks good enough quality to me considering it's an entry level foldable device. We found a bit of chromatic aberration, but really nothing serious. We found a very natural tonal rendering. The main camera also has this kind of characteristics and in this case, curiously on the Zoom 2X seems to give a good quality. In fact, the Zoom 4X also looks of acceptable quality but this is the maximum zoom. So they've decided to give an honest zoom up to the maximum where they can still give you good quality but there are other devices that can go up to 10x using the 108 megapixel sensor. So it doesn't seem like you're taking 100% advantage of all the information on the sensor. But again, these are little things that we could forgive. The battery is 4000 milliamps and supports fast charging of 45 watts. It definitely does not disappoint in battery life. Normally the upright folding ones have similar batteries. In fact, there are much more expensive foldables that have smaller batteries. So in this case, it's definitely on par with high-end foldables. And in this case, it has 256 gigabytes of storage and just turned on it had 7% utilized. This is a very positive thing. You have plenty of space to store your own data. Although it is a UFS 2.2 storage, meaning it is a little bit slow in its read and write compared to high-end foldables, but I find that for the vast majority of users it's still a very good speed. It will also give us 12 gigabytes of RAM with LPDDR4X. Again, it's very good RAM capacity, but it's not as fast as high-end foldables. But still, I would insist that for what it costs, this device offers us very competitive specifications. It comes with Android 13 and dock or is 4.0. I have never tried this system so I am interested to see what it can offer us. But in software it looks like it may fall short because it doesn't come with Android 14 yet. And the processor is the MediaTek Helio G99, a processor that definitely goes according to the price considering that we are talking about an entry level foldable. If you're interested in benchmarks, here I have the result in multi-core reach 2047 points. I think that for a lot of users it will have enough power. Obviously if you're going to want to play games on a foldable of this form factor, it's not going to give you all the power you'd expect. And on a single core, it gave 729 points. If you're interested in the Antutu benchmark, it scored 419,165 points. But in the video review, we will have a much more detailed analysis of the performance it is capable of achieving running various applications, editing video and more. For now, it is leaving me a very good impression considering its price. It has a good screen, decent cameras, decent processor, very good storage. I don't know if we could ask for anything more from a foldable at this price. But I insist, for now it has been a first look. In the video review, I will tell you many more details about it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, you know you can let me know. And we'll see you next time.